إن الحمد لله all of our praise belongs to Allah سبحانه وتعالى God Almighty نحمده so we praise Him ونستعينه and we seek His assistance alone ونستغفره and we seek His forgiveness ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا and we seek His protection we seek His protection from the evil thoughts and desires and from our own sinful actions. May Allah Fala Mudillah. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides to this path, none can misguide them. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to go astray because of their own arrogance and heedlessness, not even the prophets were capable of forcing people to this guidance. وَنَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَٰهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهَ And we bear witness and we testify that there is nothing worthy of our worship except for Allah, God Almighty. وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And we bear witness and we testify that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم May God's peace and blessings be upon him was his last and final messenger. The Prophet ﷺ was walking in the market one day. And he walks by a vendor. And he's walking by this vendor who's selling corn. And the Prophet ﷺ sees this and he puts his hand in the corn. And he notices that the corn on top is dry, but the corn underneath is wet. And so the Prophet ﷺ turns to this man and he says, what is this? And so the man replies to him, the, the seller of corn says, this was corn that got rained on. And the prophet understands what this man is trying to do. He puts the good merchandise on top and the bad merchandise underneath. Because when you go and you inspect, you look at the top one and then you just put the rest in the bag. So this man was trying to get away with selling used corn or uh, wet corn as dry corn. Corn that had gone bad versus corn that had gone good. That was still good. So the Prophet says, why did you not place this on top of the corn so people know what they're buying? So that people know what they're buying and they see what they're buying. They know that this is not good corn. So why would you sell it under the illusion that it is good corn? So the Prophet ﷺ tells this man, and he says, he who deceives us is not from amongst us. He who deceives us is not from amongst us. Being truthful, my brothers and sisters, is a prophetic tradition. It's a prophetic message. It's a prophetic calling. Not just from our dear beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but the prophets before that. As Allah tells us in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واذكر في الكتاب إبراهيم إنه كان صديق النبي And mention in this book, the story of Abraham. For indeed, he was a man of truth and a prophet. And Allah also tells us in the same chapter of Mary. And mention in the book, Ishmael. Indeed, he was true to his promise and a messenger and a prophet. And Allah also tells us, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِدْرِيسِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّقًا نَبِيًّا And mention in this book, Idris. For indeed he was a man of truth and a prophet. My dear brothers and sisters today, we are here to teach each other and to remind each other that our message is a message of truth, whether we're talking about religion or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُ آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do people think that they will be tested? Do people think that they will be left to say, we believe, and that they will not be tested? Some of the tests and trials we, that happen in our lives, my brothers and sisters, put into question whether or not we are truly truthful people. Cheating and hypocrisy is rampant. But this is unacceptable 
for those who believe in God and His Messenger. Unacceptable. Ibn Hajar al-Haythami, a great scholar of the past, said that cheating is when the owner of a good knows something which if the person that would be buying it knew about this thing, he would not pay that month for money for it. Cheating is when you know something has a defect in it. When you're selling your used car and you know the transmission is about to go bad, but the person buying it doesn't know. So it's okay. It's not my fault. It's his job to go and do that research. Right? Buy it as is. Cheating is when you know something is defective and you do not tell that person about it. And you charge him as if it wasn't defective. <clears throat> and what's really amazing is for those, who, especially the young men who play sports, we think that people who cheat prosper. If you look at the most recent Super Bowl, right? the scandal that was around the New England Patriots because they used deflated balls to their advantage. You look at NBA and you watch people playing basketball and they know they got away with something that they should have gotten away with. They're silent. Or they argue with people. No, I didn't do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and reminds us in the Quran, and never think that those who rejoice in what they have done and like to be praised for what they did not do Never think them to be in safety from the punishment. And is for them a painful torment. You might think that someone got away with something and now brags about it. You might think that that is the, the luxurious lifestyle. But in fact, my brothers and sisters, it is not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God tells us for them, awaiting for them, those who cheat and lie and steal from others, take advantage of others, for them is a painful punishment. How many of us clocked in today but didn't clock out for Jum'ah? How many of us are writing today off as an eight-hour day but we leave two, three hours early and we don't make up the work at home? How many of us submit overtime and we were just at our desk doing nothing? How many of us lie to our families and ourselves and to our work? The Prophet ﷺ tells us, tells us that a time will come when one man will not care how he gains his money, whether it was legal or illegal, whether it was permissible or impermissible. There will be a time that comes when people will not care how they earn their money. Is the Prophet talking about us? We ask Allah to protect us from this. <clears throat> it's narrated by Imam Ahmad that the flesh and body that is raised on unlawful sustenance shall not enter paradise. Hell is more deserving of this flesh that grows on one's body out of unlawful sustenance. We as providers for our family might think or believe that we're doing something good for our family by providing for them that extra overtime we didn't work. But realize this is a warning for those same people you believe you're providing for, you're only making their flesh being more deserved to hellfire than heaven. My brothers and sisters, this is a serious crime. <clears throat> the Prophet, peace be upon him, tells us that there are signs of hypocrisy. And we should reflect on ourselves and make sure that we are not fulfilling these signs. And we should reflect on ourselves and make sure that we specifically make sure we fulfill our promises. The Prophet, peace be upon him, tells us that the sign of a hypocrite is that whenever he speaks, he lies. And whenever he makes a promise, he doesn't fulfill it. And when he is trusted with something, he betrays that trust. Does that last portion not remind us of gossip? We know that when we speak, we should be truthful. We shouldn't lie. Even if it was just a joke, we shouldn't lie. And when you tell someone you're going to do something, and they rely upon you to do that, we make sure that we fulfill that. 
But this last part, my brothers and sisters, when people trust us with secrets, when people trust us to make sure we don't spread what they're going through, when people trust us and confide in us, we shouldn't mock them. Post it on Facebook. Oh, mashallah, one day this brother so-and-so did this. Can you believe that? Some of the scholars even say that when you're speaking with someone, and if they look around just to make sure no one else is hearing, that that sign automatically means that you are not allowed to share what you hear. Because it is a bond and a trust between these two people. May Allah protect us from these signs of hypocrisy. Allah reminds us and tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu in jaakum fasiqum binaba'in fatabayyanu an tusibu qawman bi jahalah fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimeen. O believers, he's talking to us, he's talking to this crowd. O you who believe in Allah and His Messenger, O you who claim this belief, that if someone who comes to you, an evil person comes to you, Spreading news, make sure you verify it first. Do not automatically take it as fact. Do not go around and spread it. Do not assume that it is 100% accurate. For what happens if you do so? Lest you harm people in ignorance and afterwards you become regretful what you have done. Please scoot forward for the brothers to make sure that we fill in the gaps. The Messenger of Allah, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, says, O people, Allah is pure. Our Lord, we worship, He is pure. And therefore, He accepts only that which is pure. Allah has commanded these believers, and He has commanded His messengers by saying, O messengers, Eat of the good things and do, not, and do good deeds. And he has commanded oh, for those who believe, eat of the lawful things that we have provided for you. And then the Prophet, peace be upon him, mentions a man. He is a person who is traveling for a long period of time. His hair and clothes are disheveled and is covered with dust. He lifts his hands towards the sky and he says, My Rabb, my Rabb, my Lord, my Lord. But this man's food was not lawful. And this man's drink was not lawful. And this man's clothes were not lawful. And this man's nourishment were not lawful. If everything about this man is not lawful, his food, his drink, his clothes, his work, his sustenance. Everything about him was not lawful. The Prophet then says, how then can his supplication be accepted? Now the Prophet is not telling us necessarily that when we sin we shouldn't repent. No, for sure, when we collect this narration and all of the other narrations, when we sin and we reflect on ourselves and we feel that guilt, we turn back to our Lord. But what we are being warned about here is living in an unlawful lifestyle. Everything about us is unlawful. And yet we have the audacity to raise our hands to our Lord and ask for things when we ourselves seek that which is unlawful. And what's truly amazing, my brothers and sisters, is that sometimes we may be called to question. Sometimes we may be called to judge between people in their disputes. And yet realize this, if you were to go to someone and ask them to resolve a conflict, knowing full well you are wrong, you're being unlawful. You're being untruthful. You're being deceitful. Even if this man was a prophet, the prophet, peace be upon him, tells us, he says, I am only but a human being. And you people may have disputes. Maybe someone amongst you can present his case in a more eloquent manner than the other. And because of this, I gave my judgment in his favor. 
But beware. But beware, the Prophet is talking to his companions, beware that if you do this, and I, by error, give something to one of you which you do not deserve, and I give you that judgment, and I judge in your favor, beware, because I have given you a piece of fire. I have given you a piece of fire. May Allah protect us from these people. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم seek forgiveness from your Lord Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty. And we ask that he sends his peace and blessings to our dear beloved Prophet Muhammad. May God's peace and blessings be upon him. <clears throat> what is the takeaway today, my brothers and sisters? The takeaway message today is live your life in a truthful, honest lifestyle. Live your life according to the truth. For how could you lie and treat and deceit people and yet be expected to teach the truth and spread the truth about God? For when we go to work, whether we accept it or not, we represent Islam and Muslims. So then how could we, when we go to work or we go to our families and we teach these people about God and His Messenger and yet we lie on a daily basis, how then could they ever believe a word we say about Al-Haq, the truthful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'll share with you a last beautiful story from the life of Abu Bakr, one of the most greatest companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. One day he is with one of his servants and his servant had brought some food. And so they're eating from it. And so his servant says, oh Abu Bakr, do you know where I got this food from? He says, no, tell me. He says, the money that I used to buy this food, I earned before in a time of ignorance. I earned before I became a Muslim. Do you know how I earned that money? No, please go ahead, tell me. He says, one day I was with someone. And I told him, do you want me to tell you your future? So the man said, yeah, please. If you know how to, go ahead. He says, I do. So I gave him his future. I read his future for him, even though he was lying. I read his future for him. And this is the money that he paid me for that service. Now, not only was this money earned in an unlawful way, it was also earned through a lying and deceitful manner. Do you know what Abu Bakr did after hearing this story? He wasn't, oh, you know what, I didn't know about it, so Allah will forgive me, it's okay. Now you're Muslim, it's okay, not a big deal. Just go on with life. Abu Bakr, one of our greatest role models, wanted to live life such an, in such a pure and honest and truthful manner that he shoved his finger in the back of his throat and regurgitated that food. He didn't even want something which he would not be held accountable for. But he knew it was from lying and deceit. He didn't want any part of that in his body. My brothers and sisters, this, seem, this might seem as an extreme measure. But this was the measure in which they would go to make sure that they lived an honest and truthful lifestyle. Nothing nourishes their body except that which is pure. Which brings us back to the hadith we mentioned, the narration that we mentioned earlier. That Allah is pure and accepts that which is pure. May Allah accept from us. May Allah make us of those who are pure and purified. May Allah make us of those who consistently strive to purify ourselves. Our wealth, our riches, our nafs, our soul. 
May Allah make us of those who live a truthful and honest lifestyle. May Allah make us of those who flee away from any type of deceit and call out any type of lying and dishonesty. May Allah make us of those who never engage in cheating and lying and stealing. May Allah make us of those who are always constantly living for His sake, for the sake of truth. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. O our Lord, give us the best of this life. Wa fil akhirati hasana. And the best of the next life. Waqina adab al nar. And protect us from the painful torments of hellfire. Before we move on to prayer, just a few announcements. Tonight at 8 p.m., our, family, our Friday family night begins tonight at 8 p.m. We have an esteemed guest. Our lecture tonight will be titled, The U.S. Government's Countering Violent Extremism Program. And our guest tonight with us is Mike German, who is a former FBI counterterrorism agent. So we encourage everyone to please attend this event tonight. Our Saturday family night begins tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. <clears throat> and Sunday morning from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., we have our Connecting Muslim Seniors program. We also have an Ummah clinic and inviting our elderly community members to our program that will provide health education with physicians from Ummah community clinic, spiritual reflections, and social activities. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. O our Lord, give us the best of, best of this life. Wa fil akhirati hasana. And the best of the next life. Waqina adab al-nar. And protect us from the punishments of hellfire. Wa aqimil salah.